Good. Welcome everybody to the session of the reference desk and it's uh, May the 21st and 22nd and today we're going to hear from Alexander Meinhard. He's living in the north of Germany in a town, Kapel. And uh, Alexander started his career in mining engineering and he spent 15 years in the oil and gas production uh, business before doing uh, an MBA at the London Business School in the early 1990s. And after that time, he became a consultant on uh, change in uh, companies. Now, in addition to his professional work, he became interested in library work within the Baha'i community. He was a member of the Committee of Archives and Library of uh, the Baha'is of Germany in, uh, from 2010 to 2013. And since 2013, he has been a member of the Hermann Grossman Archive. Uh, in addition to this, he has published some uh, editions of uh, collected um, Baha'i papers. He may tell us about that. Uh, but because of this uh, varied background in archives and uh, working on digitization as well, uh, we've invited Alexander to be part of the series. So welcome, Alexander, and we uh, now look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much indeed, Graham. So I'm going to share the screen. And let's start from scratch. Well, how it all began. Um, since I enrolled as a Baha'i, I started to collect Baha'i materials uh, and started as a hobby. And in 2009, there was a point of acceleration because once again, I had bought a book at the Baha'i uh, bookshop in, in Langenheim, um, which I have only forgotten that I had it already on my bookshelf. So as, as, as a matter of fact, I was a little bit curious about myself. And I asked whether there is not a complete list of all the publications ever done in Germany. And to my surprise, the answer was there isn't. This caused me uh, in 2010 that I was nominated by the NSA to become the member of the Library and Archive Committee in charge of the library that was from 2010 to 2013 and from 2012 to 2013 also of the archive in total because Günther Miles had to leave because he was too sick to continue his 20 years of work for uh, the archive. Um, in 2013, I decided to leave this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, privilege uh, of library and uh, archive. And what happened has happened that uh, during the times I was in London High, and it was quite a long time because I was there actually for months. Susanne Pfaff-Grossmann was sitting in the same room as me. She was working on the Hermann Grossmann archive. Uh, that meant uh, she had a laptop open and she had some uh, boxes, papers and books. And I had no clue what uh, she did at all. But she said, when I, she was aware I was going to leave this uh, committee. She said, well, do, you're doing the same for the Hermann Grossmann archive. And well, that was... That was quite an acceleration, I can tell you. I come to this a little bit later. Well, the today's result, private, is I have uh, 3.5 rooms just behind material in my uh, home here, with uh, 19 shelves, which is about 160 meters or 120 yards, books, magazines, journals, one covered in addition with only CDs, DVDs, films, and slides, and three and a half music cassettes with Baha'i speeches all digitized, but not really sorted, uh, the latest, and further digitized material uh, on my computer and external drives. Publicly, uh, you mentioned that uh, already, um, uh, uh, that I've published books, but before that happened, there was, uh, there's this famous magazine, Zone der Wahrheit, um, also the Vertikal, which was actually the very first um, uh, Baha'i magazine in Germany. But uh, Sunday der Wahrheit was uh, a magazine which is about uh, one shelf, uh, one, one level of a shelf, uh, completely filling, um, which I collected and I have the original. Uh, it. They are all digitized like Baha'i Brief and Tempera, uh, and they are also on the Baha'i from works, you can read them. The, and the status is for Sunday der Wahrheit and Baha'i Brief, thanks to Ludwig here. Uh, it's not only that as an index, but they are all proofread. And uh, so that's quite uh, ahead of uh, many things uh, 
David Hasek could have done in between. The other outcome was two published books in 2019. It was uh, Austin Erinnerung von Arthur Bahan, Acker and Haifa. What is it? They're actually memories of Dr. Josefine Falsche uh, from talks of Arthur Baha in Acker and Haifa. She took notes of uh, together with uh, Stefa, uh, Stefana Stefana and uh, Stevens. And uh, in 2022, there was a very limited uh, edition of uh, all the tablets of Abdul Baha to Germany, uh, comprising some 700 p uh, pages, uh, more or less. And uh, under construction or in progress is uh, the tablet of Professor Farrell, um, or two for Farrell, not that it is, uh, that there has been no publication in at all. On the contrary, one is um, the, the one by Paul Wader, which is for the good of mankind, and also Peter Mühlschläger has uh, written a note about that on an English edition. But here, these are the texts, uh, the original Persian tablet, which I've uh, digged out, and also the text of Josephine Falsche and uh, the notes and text Professor Borel has published by himself, which gives an extra view on why he actually has uh, became, uh, become a Baha'i. So these are the... Uh, results in, uh, for the public as well. How, do I, how did it get there? It was a steep learning curve from scratch because I, I'm not a librarian, I'm not an archivist, but uh, when I joined this committee, I elaborated a concept for the German NSO and how to build up actually library because there were five libraries in place, all completely a mess, sorry about that at that time. And I was, became a pupil under the, in archiving under Günter Malz, you all know from uh, uh, his expertise. And um, the other uh, option was that I had the unique uh, opportunity to get uh, agreed by the NSA to get in state of the art PC at that time with two flat screens, a really extreme good audio system, a scanner and a printer. So that gave me, put me in the position uh, to do actually whatever I wanted to do uh, with all the freedom I wanted to have at that time. Um, well, the result on the libraries was uh, the, as I said, the five libraries have been merged into one. That was the official NSA library, the historic library and the archives printer has a separate place and put it in the, uh, in the uh, some, uh, Tresor, uh, then the Persian library, which com was completely messy. Even the books and the magazines were on the floor and you had to uh, uh, step on them if you wanted to move in that room. It was really, I don't know how the people would put it. Then there was the uh, reference library of the publishing trust, which was somewhere in the same building and the library and the secretariat in the, uh, of the NSA to look up for uh, quotations or to verify things. And I put them all into one and uh, said, okay, there are actually two or three uh, areas where the books are. The one, for example, in the secretary or the NSA stayed there, but the books were, have been registered. The others have to be uh, were merged at that time. Um, what also happened was that so I picked up that perhaps who had to uh, uh, downsize uh, for whatever reason because they moved in smaller homes or they uh, they didn't want to have uh, uh, so much uh, publications or books and their shelves any longer. Um, they were offered to the uh, committee, which was not really appreciated by Günther Miles, and he turned this uh, request always down. But I thought, and it was also not really appreciated by the NSA, but I found it was a real great treasure to fill the gaps of the NSA library and also to help uh, to build up a stock for those who cannot spend a really expensive money or much money on expensive publications in Germany, which we're really uh, happy to have, for example, an uh, elder edition rather than latest. What also uh, took place was that uh, all the photos of the Baha'i events, movements, groups, uh, whoever there was, and photos were taken, uh, we have digitized by the scanner. And also 80 plus blueprints of the House of Worship in Langenhain, people even didn't know that they existed at that time. 
The, uh, one of the highlights was the vinyl record of the Baha'i's voice, which was digitized with 78 RPM, and it was nearly as good uh, result as that which you find when you do a pilgrimage in uh, Haifa in the house of Abdul Baha. It's the same uh, uh, um, prayer. Actually, there's a second prayer I found out, but uh, that has been lost. It was taken in Hungary. From movies, we have digitized the 1936 uh, summer school, the last summer school before uh, the faith was forbidden by the Nazis, and also the opening of Abdul Baha with Abdul Baha uh, in the house of worship Langheim with part of the original speech she gave in German, actually the only speech ever given in the house of worship in Langheim. Well, having such a big library with about uh, 9,000 books uh, at that time, um, I was looking for uh, to seize the cards uh, filing system and came up uh, with an BIPSIS, which is a bibliotech uh, or library system to register all these data. And I asked uh, um, uh, somebody from the university, a close friend of mine, non Baha'i, and if he uh, whether he could do that for me as a favor, and did it. And please don't ask me about uh, the technical details of this IT software thing, or I have no understanding on that, because uh, all I can say, it's an open access system, and everybody who has some understanding can work on that or add on that, it's, and it was uh, free of cost, the software. And uh, technically, it, could be uh, accessible from uh, via APM from uh, VPN from all over the world. Um, now the NSA is not willing to open that, but technically you could do that. There are five levels uh, of organization: reader one, two, and three. And reader one, you can see a research uh, and can access the list of uh, results only. The reader two. Uh, can uh, read the meta metadata and reader three also attachments. And the librarian who actually uh, is as reader three, but he can or she can alter, add, a, uh, add or delete fields. Uh, so about that. Also uh, users and languages in the main menu. And the IT, which is the uh, highest level, of course, there's no restrictions at all, but that is not necessary for the use. Um, what I want to do is I give you now um, an online uh, overview because I copied at the end of the day the same system for myself. Having said that, it will delete into uh, I will delete it in due course because the demand is zero. But how it works, I can show you right now. First of all, because you say you are more or less available, uh, more favorable in English, I changed the whole menu into English. And register myself here. So you see, it's all in English. I, and when I come back into German, uh, then you see that changes here uh, into German, but say that's in English. What you can do is, for example, I give you an, a very strange, uh, very simple uh, research like Fortrack, which means speeches. And you find here something. Um, all the, the speeches which have been uh, put into the system by different authors, like, for example, uh, Adelheid uh, Schwarzköller or Bernhard Westerhoff or whoever they say, Amino And then you can refine it and say, okay, I want to do that uh, also, for example, with the authors. And we have seen Koller. Downside the result to Koller at the end of the day. And you see here now it's all in color, color Jäger, it's all the same lady. And when you see here an uh, attached file, that means there are attachments to it. Here you see some metadata, and uh, let's go to a level deeper. This is the header. It's uh, uh, the, all the media data is, for example, uh, the kind of uh, publication, uh, the original title, the author, language, uh, who it was it published, date, year, the size of the book, weight of the book, or the manuscript, whatever you want. Uh, I've, I've compared it to a couple of, uh, with a couple of uh, librarians who are non Baha'i, and they said, you've got everything uh, you can think of except the uh, type 
of the printing and the quality of the paper, but these are not of interest of myself. And what you can do is, if you see, you can see, okay, I want to read it. That is, for example, the, uh, the text. And you download it. And what is this here? This is the cover. You can download it as well. So when I go here, that's what you see. Then here's the cover with the text. And you can read it and uh, you can research whenever you want. So this is exactly a copy of, of uh, what I built up on my own as the Bipsis, which is in London. I, of course, it's not as in time, but it's the way uh, works. And here you see the different uh, levels and the administration. Um, one thing for the menu, you can add any language you want in the world. And it's quite easy to do that. For example, I've started with Bulgarian, but you can also do that uh, in uh, yeah, yeah, some uh, uh, in Bulgaria. Um, you can do it also in Persian and the others, but I stopped there because, as I said, the demand is to me uh, really. Okay. Go further. This is the same thing again. Uh, when I finished that uh, and covered all the uh, library areas, I copied the whole system and called it Archive uh, Archives, this, which is the archival system. And you can actually use the same system, of course, with different fields and of course, with different day, uh, uh, metadata on the same server with the same software, the same operational functions for all the archival uh, material, photos, documents, handwritten, typed uh, records, uh, movies, whatever you want. It's, uh, I, I, well, it's tested and it's done. And we have started at that time to fill uh, all the data in. Having said that, when I left the committee, uh, this whole system was not taken over by uh, those who take, uh, are now a member of the committees. They dropped it completely, unfortunately but it could have worked uh, perfectly. From 2013 uh, on iStudies, as I said, uh, I, I have built it up. And now the biggest, uh, the, the most important thing for a high collection, I'm more or less known in Germany that uh, somebody wants to drop off his uh, Baha'i materials prior uh, not putting in the bin. They ask me, do you take it over? Do you want to have it? And I say always, yes. Uh, as long as it's Baha'i related, uh, give me a reason. I take it. I, uh, either you send it or I take it from your home, whatever. And also add this uh, uh, from my own uh, sources, the German Baha'i publications, whatever I can get hold of. So what I have here uh, in my home is a complete copy of the um, Baha'i library in Langenheim. And not only that, because I've a large extent of books, which are not even in Langenhain. It's probably a unique system uh, here in Germany. Um, now, there's another thing which I found out that with photos, it was quite difficult to identify who is actually on the uh, photos and how they are related. And then uh, here I come to PICAS and PIF. Uh, PIF is the uh, is abbreviation for uh, pre-ancestry files. Or pedigree are the statistic files from the uh, moments which I have taken over. Not the moments, but the files. Um, here you see an example from Picasa. You see the original uh, movies, uh, sorry, the photos like from Albert Mülschlick. Here, of course, you recognize them, but here is part of uh, any photos. And what Picasa does, Picasa identifies the person and suggests, is that the same person? And you can say yes or no. And we find from these pictures, for example, okay, this person is exactly here. Also here, for example, you see him uh, uh, with his family and uh, you see on the right-hand side, uh, all the, uh, the names of these person listed. And if you click on these uh, uh, names, you see which person is who, uh, who is which person and you see exactly how they develop, for example, over time. Uh, if you saw them correctly. I'm coming now to PAF. 
which is data fi uh, file, which I uh, came across when I did ancestry on myself uh, for my own family, uh, which I could tr trace back with the help of my uh, relatives back to 650 odd and, uh, and such and said, okay, let's build up the whole thing for the Baha'is in Germany in the early days. And here it's, for example, uh, Albert Mutschlig, Albert Mutschlig handled the cause with his wife and his children and his parents, and then his second marriage. And of course, you can add also uh, notes and uh, pictures and whatsoever if you want, uh, like uh, other metadata, uh, whatever is relevant to a person. And you can also do his research, for example, here's research for my name uh, and see uh, whom you find at the end of the day. Now, the, uh, what I do is uh, I have not finished to digitize the whole uh, Hermann Grossman archive. Uh, the Hermann Grossman archive comprises about 150 boxes of archival boxes, uh, which uh, each has about the size of two uh, big folders uh, as a volume. And about 60% uh, no, have been digitalized and proofread and uh, uh, tested, and that is all the books and publications. And now I come uh, to the most interesting bit, which has been mostly uh, digitized, but not really uh, renamed and sorted and uh, uh, checked. That is the handwritten part uh, of um, Hermann Grossmann. And that is a unique treasure, I can tell you. I've never ever seen such a big uh, compilation of, of the high material. He was really a great genius on that time. On myself, uh, the tablet for Rella said uh, will uh, be published as the next uh, volume of the historic series. And then there are the Baha'i speeches from 1945 to 1950, where people say there was a lot. I make it a long story short. In 1948, there were 200 speeches given by German Baha'is to the public audience at least once a time, mostly 1.5 times in on average. So it was not mass, uh, uh, many speech, but it was massive. If you consider at that time, the numbers of the highest was about 600 to 700 only. Uh, the other uh, target is Dr. Hermann Grossmann's Grundwisse und Studienhefte, which you could call Rui Course 0.0, uh, because he was, and that was a system to introduce people from scratch into the Baha'i faith. And he thought about that already in 1936 during the period when the Baha'is were have been forbidden. Another one is the Baha'i administration Germany as is because you cannot read it anywhere where it is. You find no information. Uh, it's not even published somewhere. Or the, uh, the who is who of the Baha'is of Germany between 1904 and 19, uh, 1905, 1937. Um, which is about 700 people, uh, 50 people who could be uh, part of that. Long story will be the, uh, the high German history from 1905 to whenever, I don't know. And uh, the other thing is the very first publication I've done, the translation of uh, Mrs. Falsch's collection into English because there's a, quite a huge demand and I have to do that. And also, of course, the updates of the Falsch book and the tablets of the <coughs> Germany. Uh, because there's further information available uh, at the end of the day. Well, this is what is, in a nutshell, what the whole system is about, where I'm here, uh, what, I, what has been done on digitalization. Um, maybe, maybe I can pass a word on, uh, on the uh, equipment at that time in the, uh, in the library uh, and the archive. I had hired a machine and a person to copy uh, materials, and we have done about 120,000 pages at that time on the copy machine and on the book edge scanner, which uh, was uh, bought for good in Langheim, and I have the same type here in the, at home as well. I have not counted at all how many thousand pages it is. Uh, which have been digitized, uh, and I don't know, even know how to do that at the end of the day. Uh, but so, please just go ahead and 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 continue on. Uh, 
Well, I'm furnished more or less because, I mean, as I said, this, uh, this machine I had, uh, we had done 120,000 uh, copies uh, digitized because I paid for that uh, at the end of the day. It was a very favorable price, uh, but with the other materials I digitized uh, in Langhein on the wood extender, book extender, and here and in the Hermann Grossman archive. I have no idea. The book I scanned and have a Gossma archive was, I only can estimate uh, uh, about uh, 60 boxes with books uh, completely filled. And I don't know how many pages on average each book has and how many books there are in this, each of the, the uh, uh, boxes are, but it must be a couple of 10,000 or 20,000 or 30,000. I have no idea. What I'm looking for is a good OCR system. It is really down. Uh, that's really uh, a thing which has caused me some trouble because the quality is not good and sufficient enough uh, when it comes to OCR recognition. Um, if you have got, uh, for example, uh, type written uh, material on red paper, forget about OCR. It doesn't work at all. So that will be transcribed manual uh, uh, by a lady who is working uh, for me and doing this all the material. And that is, for example, all the speeches, uh, 1945 to 1950, uh, all, all for example, from the ambassadors uh, of uh, Prussia, for example, to Tehran and Baghdad. There's, there's no way to do that. Uh, uh, for the machine right well uh, alexander thank you for for that uh presentation and it's very impressive the uh the, the size of your project and also the command of the early technology that you have brought into place and the comprehensive cataloging system that you have in place uh so we have some questions uh elsa is first <laughs> Sorry, before I have to dash off, I apologize. That was very interesting. Um, I just have a question about uh, Herman Grossman's archives. You're digitizing them. Um, yes. And so the originals, I'm just wondering what will happen with them. Just aware that the, that the World Center has uh, acquisition policy for the hands of the cause papers. So I was just curious if by any chance they might be going there. Um, just, just a yeah, just or or if they were going to the National Assembly, just you know, in terms of long, long time, when we digitize, we don't generally toss the originals. So I've, but I understand this is for, for access and and convenience of whoever needs to have access to it. But yeah, so just curious about that. Yeah. Alicia, that's a tragic story, a really tragic story. Uh, when Hamann Grossman passed away. The Grossman family offered that uh, to uh, the Baha'i world, uh, which refused to accept it because they said it should be uh, preserved in the National Archive and Library. That was done for, well, he died in about for about 20 years. And found out that not only the whole uh, uh, material was in the mess, but parts had been stolen. And that was the moment she was sitting on that stuff and that nobody accessed, nobody accessed this material at all, not even members of the NSA. She was furious about that. And she was working from uh, the end of the 80s till about uh, when I joined this uh, uh, committee of archive and library uh, till the end of the day on this material. And when she asked me, or she actually hijacked me to, to do this material in 2013, I was really surprised uh, in many ways. First of all, as I said, because of the size, tremendous size of this treasure. Secondly, that it was opening so many spheres I've never even thought about, and what Hermann Grossman has actually done as a pioneer in many administration and organization direction. And then it turned out that the NSA had actually no interest in this material, absolutely no interest. So what Susanna had decided was to 
take it out of the archive of the NSA and put it in one of the private uh, uh, apartments. Uh, she had uh, actually rented, but she, she, uh, it was vacant and she uh, took it for that. And I was working there for from 2013 to 2019. Yeah, 2019 in that rooms and digitizing work on that material. And when she passed away, the children decided to sell the house and believe it or not, 50% of the material which I have digitized is still in Heidelberg uh, in a room uh, privately and the NSA doesn't know whether they want to accept it or not and the address is at my home in my sitting room and I do that uh, till the end uh, of 2024 when I promise to seize that but the NSA still is not in the position to tell me when they want it, whether they want it, when they want it and where to go. And I privately have taken the stance, if nobody has an interest, I take it all on myself. I, I don't care. If there's not a proof, for example, that it's kept in good condition, I will take it on my own. I've, as I said, I've never seen anything like this. First editions, material, I thought it didn't even exist, you know, pamphlets, brochures, handwritten stuff, notes, uh, commentaries, uh, newspaper clips, uh, photos where the people have been identified as far as they could with uh, their own handwriting. Uh, this context and student have there, which is really a, a slower, short introduction to the Baha'i faith. All his publications he's done, and that's a lot at the time uh, he was alive. It's all here, it's all life, you know. Uh, thank you, Alexander. So, Elsa, there's there's uh, an answer to your question, and I'm just wondering if uh, you have any follow up questions. Uh, you know, given that information that Alexander shared with us, uh, not too much. I mean, it's it's it sounds to me like some of it is published, and as such, as maybe maybe would stay. Uh, you know, I I don't know for sure. I don't know the inner workings. I, it's been a while since I served there or anything. Um, so, uh, you know. I, it's very hard for me to comment on it, but um, um, but uh, yeah, something to think about, I guess. Well, if, if I would have an external advice on that, uh, supporting the whole thing, or if I could convince the NSA of what the treasure it is, uh, I mean, that would be really breakthrough, hopefully. Uh, so far, uh, I'm failing. And, and meanwhile, I'm the only one working on that material. Uh, the the, uh, the granddaughters of uh, the daughters and grandchildren uh, of Susanna Trott Grossman have uh, little to no interest at all. They they will receive a copy that is written, the written, agreed in writings. They will actually receive a copy of all the files, of course. But uh, to have an external hard drive, uh, if you don't know what the content is, if you don't know how to use it. Uh, what do you do at the end of the day, you know? Uh, follow up uh, from uh, Mujan, please. Uh, well, a couple of um, couple of suggestions. Um, I mean, certainly the Afnan Library could take it if nobody else wants it, uh, because we've got, you know, we, we've got similar sort of things. We've got Mr. Baluzi's papers and books and so on, and, and Dr. Varga's books and so on. So we could certainly take it. But I, I think if you're trying to, um, if you feel that um, the NSA is not um, sufficiently appreciative of the importance of this, um, have you thought about perhaps writing to the Universe House of Justice and just you know putting it to them? Because I think they would appreciate the importance of this, and uh, you know they, they might uh, send instructions to the NSA to to um, uh, you know make some proper arrangements for this. Well, John, thank you for uh, for the offer. Uh, the last point first: the Universal House of Social Justice has had sent written instructions to the NSA of Germany that the NSA of Germany is obliged to accept that and hold this in good uh, standing. Uh, so there's no discussion about that. Universal has made really a very uh, point on that. 
The second thing is that the NSA and the Grossman family, that means Alton Grossman and Susanne Pass Grossman, have signed a contract in writing that it's, uh, the NSA is the owner of this material once they have passed. Uh, and they are have passed. So well, neither Hartmann nor, uh, nor Susanne is still alive. Um, so officially, the NSA is the owner. The officially, the NSA has the responsibility of the whole material. But as a matter of fact, um, Whatever questions there is in terms of time, responsibility, person to talk to, obligations, procedures, there's no response at all. And actually, I mean, I told the NSA when this house was for sale, I said, well, where shall I put it to? Where's the working room I shall put it? They said, there's none. I said, I take it to my home, in my, my sitting room, my own room, you know. And there was no objection. In Thank other you, words, well, I, I don't remember the NSA that the material is still exists and they have forgotten about it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, as I say, if, if you're des you know, if you if it comes down to it, you can ship all the stuff over to the Afnard Library, we'll pay the shipping costs and we'll take it if, if it's if it's a matter of, you know, um, how should I say, in danger of, of losing this material. Well, uh, it will be not lost as long as I live, I promise. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, I, I think we'll, we'll leave that particular issue because that can be resolved offline. But I, I thinking more yeah. broadly, we have an instance here of an individual who has uh, devoted their time to this project of preserving materials for the future and then applying the technology available to ensure its uh, preservation through digitization. Um, and, and some of the questions that have come up through the series are about sustainability of projects and about collaboration. Uh, Alexander has, has worked with uh, Baha'i Works, mm -hmm. um, and I think David's online as well, David Haslip's online. Uh, so this, we've got this example of, of individual initiative. Uh, we've got uh, the example of collaboration and, uh, and also the the, the question of relationship to institutions, which may not have their their mind on on these matters in such a focused way, and I think that this scenario is probably replicated in different parts of the world. So uh, this is this is uh, one of the, in a sense the conditions that we find uh, for uh, valuable Baha'i materials in different parts of the world that are in the hands of individuals who care for them greatly. And who are trying to find an institutional home for them on an ongoing basis. Now, all of that scenario uh, is a, is only the precursor to the question of how they will be used and, and what is the access of researchers and uh, the interested reader, which is the other aspect to this. Uh, so, I just wanted to sort of put that in a broader context and see if there's any other questions. They might go range from the technical through to uh, the the content side or the user side. Um, now, I'm just wondering if there are any other questions for Alexander about the work that he's done. Anton, you have your hand up, so we'd like to hear from you, please. Actually, I have a simple question. Uh, Alexander, can you write in chat uh, your email address? I have a question about uh, German Baha'i Publishing Trust, so I can ask you my questions about this later. So if you could, right. could you write your email address, please. I do definitely, uh, that's sure. Thank you. Yeah, it is. Um, okay. well, in, in terms of what you have said, um, and uh, I'm thankful that David is uh, online. He's got all uh, a copy of all the uh, digitized uh, German Baha'i magazines, except one that is the Baha'i Nachten, or in English, Baha'i News, not because uh, I do not trust him, that's not the, uh, the point, but the thing is, once you have digitized and uh, downloaded everything, you can do a research on a person's name and get a, a complete CV out of the system within minutes. Uh, and that's the only reason. On the other hand, he, uh, is, uh, he showed, uh, uh, well, he told me once uh, a long time ago that he's also looking for pamphlets uh, 
uh, whatever the languages is. And uh, was it two or three weeks ago, David, when I sent you 650 of those, uh, I appear from my home. So he's got now a complete uh, copy of all the germs, plus I don't know how many hundreds of the English American uh, pamphlets and brochures. And uh, I have to, to go through uh, my boards because uh, what David considers as brochure um, is a different uh, thing than we have considered as brochure. So there will be many more uh, in due course, but I have to find the time to do that. I, I reckon there will be another 50, 100 again on top of that. And uh, uh, brochures, what you call brochures. The other thing is, for example, uh, looking at Mojan, um, uh, there was in the Hammond Grossman archive, uh, it's a nice story I came across, uh, the magazine, The Dawn, uh, which was from, correct me from uh, being wrong, 1923 or 1926 to 1929. Anyway, six volumes. And was quite curious to find out whether Hammond Grossman has simply uh, ceased to collect these, uh, The Dawn, uh, because this was a magazine I've never ever heard before. So I wrote to, uh, via the NSA of Germany to the NSA of Burma, the, or Myanmar as today, got no re response. And then um, about eight or nine weeks later, I wrote via the NSA in Germany to the NSA in India. And four weeks later, there was a very nice response by somebody from India saying, uh, dear sir, we are uh, sorry that there's nobody as old enough to remember this magazine any longer, uh, which caused me a smile. But uh, then I found out uh, that the Vietnam Library has put this uh, uh, magazine online and found out they have got the same uh, volumes as I do in the Hammond Grossman archive, which suggests there hasn't been any more at that time. But um, as I said, uh, okay, this leads me to the point. It's uh, Hermann Grossman has not only collected the German material, but also all uh, material from uh, South America and large portions from uh, the United States. So it's a really international approach he did at that time. Yes, exactly. The Dawn was uh, well known around the world in the 1920s. Uh, and at that time, the, the Baha'i communities were, were uh, much. Um, focused on on sharing their news uh, through such magazines uh, through the encouragement of Shogi Fendi and that's the remnant of that era um, so look uh, I wonder if there's any other questions to you um, uh, uh, Andrew can you um, ask yours please thanks Graham um, thanks uh, Alexander that's um, uh, the, the the passion that um, you know you've got for this has is, is absolutely um, uh, come through, and um, my um, uh, and I can imagine the excitement of um, coming across uh, something new and significant and reading it and rereading it and stuff is uh, and um, I'm curious uh, about um, um, that. Um, uh, have other people, um, you know, come out to uh, join the, um, you know, the the quest, and um, and how much effort do you spend in sourcing new material? Is it uh, more a case of being overwhelmed with what you've got and spending a lot of time digitising, archiving? Uh, is that the main um, uh, uh, you know, uh, place where you spend your time, or and uh, you know, have you noticed that um, you know other people are kind of inspired to join and support and um, build on what you're doing? Well, uh, unfortunately, I uh, must admit there is with the son is one of my old uh, who passed away in 2009 in January. Um, now there are still five persons in Germany who probably appreciate what I do. Uh, plus let's say another five to 10 worldwide, uh, but that's the maximum. If you ask me whether anybody supporting me uh, here in this uh, piece of work, what I do, there's, uh, as I said, a lady, uh, she's uh, typing materials for me, uh, like the speech or those who, who 
possibly cannot be uh, run through an OCR uh, software because the result would be a disaster. It's not even worthwhile to start the software because of the poor quality of the uh, uh, original, not even the, the copy of the original. So uh, the extreme is uh, to say no. To show you one example how extreme that is, there was a brochure. Um, I had the original one from 1926. And there was another copy which was undated and it showed only a label that was printed in Vienna. So I asked uh, Guido Collier, who is the uh, archivist in, in, in Vienna, what that is. And he was quite excited and wrote me about uh, nearly two pages email and referred to Alex Kaeper in his book. And it turned out it was the very first pamphlet, every very first print ever in uh, Austria. And when I, after a couple of years later, I uh, decided to make this as a present to the NSA of Austria under the condition that they should uh, keep it in good condition and uh, take care for it, I was really surprised the NSA didn't want to have it. Um, so the thing is, there's only one copy of this pamphlet left. Otherwise, there's, I've never ever come across this before or after. And uh, the NSA is not interested in Austria, even though it's the very first printing uh, material they have done at the time. So you see what the situation is. Or for example, um, there was a story on its own, uh, Victoria von Sixfeld. The good point is she was the only one to make either that Mühlschläger to become a Baha'i. The, down point, the downside point is she had a shadow, built up a shadow organization of the, the Baha'i administration in Germany, completely to the NSA and LSA, much better organized than anybody else. And she was, became a little weird at the end of the day. Um, and her followers, and she had about 30% uh, of the uh, people in, uh, enrolled as Baha'is, uh, they have uh, founded the, the nice association called Universal House of uh, Germany. Uh, and which uh, ceased only in 1984, but that was uh, founded in 1928. So these stories is still with me. I'm the only one who knows about that in detail because I've got this material here, um, but nobody really has an interest whatsoever. Mujan, maybe I come back to you and you will one that they have in the Afnan library, another uh, 17 shelf with all the material. <laughs> It's definitely an option. <laughs> I mean, certainly, if you've got uh, spare copies of materials, you can send them now. You know, the uh, if if you've got two copies of anything, send send one anyway, because uh, uh, you know that would reduce the amount of stuff on your shelves. Mujan, I have only one copy right now. The other second copy I have removed to the uh, upper floor under the roof. And uh, when I send the material over to anywhere abroad. But sure, it will be not by a parcel, it will be not by whatever a, a service, I will do it on my own, because a, a parcel value of about $5,000 US has just gone lost to the way and, uh, for, for Stanford University and DHL has no idea where the parcel has been, you know, completely gone. Oh. With all the material, and that was uh, ample materials, but I don't have it as ample to have another uh, uh, 26 kilograms material a parcel to send. Hmm. Yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's a problem, I tell you. Now the problem, the problem is coming back to you, uh, to, to uh, Andrew's uh, point, is there any interest? Um, I'm afraid the interest ceases more and more in Germany. Uh, and when I say Germany, I probably can say also in, in Austria and this that they also in Switzerland for what is Re, or in terms of collecting materials, uh, making it available uh, or accessible, uh, uh, going into depth uh, to do researches to provide knowledge. Um, this series, for example, on, on file share and the tablets of Afterbar to Germany and for Red, I thought it in the beginning there were three separate topics. As a matter of fact, they are all interlinked. 
For example, in, the, in Falche, I found out in her uh, own heritage, she said she was authorized by Atre Baha sorry, to publish uh, this material, and she hoped that one day uh, an American uh, would do that. In, in the tablets of Abdu Baha, I found three tablets where Abdu Baha actually uh, pushes uh, the Germans to translate it and make it available amongst the friends, and really becomes more and more nervous, or not to say angry about the Germans, that they don't do it until they really started the very first uh, launch in, in, in 1923 in Zonde der Wahrheit, and then in 1934, they started the series, but uh, it's also only 40% uh, to 50% of the material published ever. And in Professor Farrell, if you read the tablet of, uh, of uh, if you read the letter of uh, Farrell to Abdu Baha, where it says literally, is it true what Dr. F has, uh, uh, Dr. F has written? It is definitely Mrs. Falschir, who is Dr. F. Now, okay, that is point one. It's Falsche, it's not Fischer, as Shoggy Fendi wrote or translated one day. But what actually is uh, for talking about, which text? I have identified this text. I found out that Herrigel gave it to him, and Herrigel made some major uh, uh, failures in the typing of the uh, text of uh, Falsche because I forgot the original. And I found also that, for example, uh, Fobrell has definitely not declared as a Baha'i because of the tablet. He was a Baha'i before he received the tablet because he received the tablet in 22. So what I want to say, it's not a single point uh, uh, things, but they are uh, all intervened. They are all linked to each other. And the more I'm getting into the material, the more I'm getting into the history, it points me out uh, a picture which is so fantastic and so admirable, uh, which is completely lost uh, nowadays. No. Well, I, 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 well uh, uh, Andrew, uh, I, I missed one point or give you an answer on how much my, uh, time I spend. Uh, actually, it's my fourth career. Um, uh, as I call it, uh, and I spend about 30% uh, of all my time on it. Right. Yeah. Quite a bit. It is. <laughs> But uh, when I was in the member of the committee and of archive and library, I spent about 60% uh, of my time on that. Yeah. Because yeah. to, to re restructure a library from scratch with about four, 50 shelves at that time, within one year, you can do it any other way. Hmm. Must have Thank you. Uh, please go ahead, Masood, and thank you, Andrew, for those questions. You can follow up. We'll just have a few more before we um, finish the session. Masood, please go ahead. Oh, thank you very much, Alexander, and it was wonderful. Uh, my question is related to more history of the Baha'i community in Germany, because we understand that during the Nazi regime, many of the Baha'i books and records were confiscated. So can you tell me that, you know, whether there was a recovery, you know, uh, attempt after that, or some of these materials were recovered or retained or not? Thank you. Right. Um, the story is, um, if you give me about five minutes, six minutes to explore it, the story is two trucks with about uh, 50 soldiers uh, arrived at the secretary uh, of the NSA in Germany. And they take everything and the trucks were completely full and loaded and it uh, was burned by the Nazis. That is the official story if you ask people, uh, or the public story if you ask people in Germany. The truth is slightly different. I don't deny that there have been two trucks, but remember the trucks at that time were not 40 tons trucks, but maximum 10 tons trucks, as you see them in the old movies. I do not deny that there are 30 or 40 soldiers, maybe I don't care. But when they have uh, collected all the material, uh, you have to bear in mind that the Baha'i Publishing Trust, which was in place, was not part of the NSA or Baha'i community, but it was a private entity, which was uh, what has gone bust in 1934, so three years before. And all this uh, uh, ample material, because they have 
printed books way over the, over the demand, about 10 times over the demand at that time. They were sitting, of, of course, in the house of Alice Schwarz, and of course, the Nazis have uh, taken them away uh, and uh, to some place. When it comes to the real secretary material, my, my estimate is maximum four to five moving packages at max there, there was, because physically that was not possible to have be more. If you look at it in the short time, the NSA existed and what actually the small community was about. Um, has there been some research to do that where this material has gone? Yes, uh, and the result is uh, we don't know. What I can promise you is from my experience from the Jewish history of the Baha'is, uh, from, from, from myself, is that the Nazis definitely have not burned the secretariat material for no way. At that time, they were so anxious to preserve all the material because in case some superior would, would ask for material, they wouldn't have dared to burn it. They may have burned all but one or two copies of the uh, books printed, but they definitely would have kept at least one copy, if not two or three in, in case of. You know. Now the story is this, uh, material has gone first to a, um, uh, uh, how do you call it, uh, a police, a converted police station in Stuttgart, and uh, that was bombed during World War II. But nobody can tell me whether the material was still in place or before it was has taken to Berlin. Now, Berlin was also bombed during World War II, but the Russians had taken uh, a lot of archival materials into uh, the secret um, archive of uh, the material, uh, military in, in, in Moscow. And uh, I know that Anime, uh, Anneliese Bob was in Moscow in 19, uh, 1995, I think, to do research. And she was very badly surprised that there was hardly anything available. I, well, I don't deny that she was there. I don't deny that she was asking to see everything, but there may be an option that he has not, uh, she has not seen everything because the Russians at that time simply didn't show everything. So there is an option, there's more on this military archive, uh, which is, was not uh, at that time. And in 2013, I have uh, initiated an exchange of a deal with the NSA whether somebody should go there and do a research, uh, which was really not taken up or followed after by the NSA. And well, this story is now it's too late. We have to wait another 10 to 15 years, probably down the road to, to have the opportunity to go there and do research. The second thing is that uh, Hermann Grossmann has uh, given a large extent of officially books and archival material to um, Professor Preisendanz, who was a member of the SS and uh, definitely a Nazi and head of the library of the University of Heidelberg. Um, Susanne Pfaff Grossmann and I have decided uh, because uh, there was no information available that anybody has contacted this university or Professor Heisenbanz at all, that we start an, uh, an, act uh, um, an activity to do this research. And research was with the University of Heidelberg to their surprise that there is no material at all in uh, the University of Heidelberg. Neither they have received uh, any documentation that they have received, nor they had handed back. But they're, uh, surprising, there's an exchange of letters after World War uh, II between Hermann Grossmann and Preisendanz about this handover of material. Be it as it is, the material is either lost or gone or handed back to Hermann Grossmann, I don't know. That is the tragic side. But the good side, uh, Masud, is um, the Baha'is had so many copies available and hidden by themselves, under, in a uh, bird in the garden, hidden under the roof, uh, given to the neighbors, uh, whatever they have done, so that the loss of real uh, material is, except on the sectorial papers like documentation and so on, uh, is less to than less to five percent. 
even the, the protocols of the NSA are in copies available. Uh, so the financial reports are gone, uh, the Baha'i lists are gone. Uh, strange enough, that there's no copy available, or hardly any co uh, copies available. Uh, but uh, bear in mind, until uh, 34, there was no official uh, enrollment. You know, uh, somebody was uh, considered to be a Baha'i when he said, "I accept or I think Baha'u'llah is great." That's it. You know, it, there was no documentation who is a Baha'i who is not a Baha'i. It was really a very gray area at the end of the day. So I, I reckon that is maximum five percent of material has gone lost uh, forever. Thank For example, you. in my own collection, there's only two publications which I miss is the very first edition of a book where I have the second edition and the very first uh, pamphlet of Edwin Fisher, which was about 16 pages, uh, that is gone. I know that it existed, but this are the only one which is missing. The rest I have in my bookshelves. Thanks a lot. Yeah. And not as a copy, but as an original. Uh, Masud, thank you for that question. It's a very great question and, and elicited great uh, information there from Alexander about the, uh, the uh, uh, fate of those early materials. So thank you so much for that. Uh, maybe time for some final questions. I've got one or two um, and see if anybody else has one. Alexander, one question concerned um, your search for uh, OCR software. Um, wondering whether you're talking about software for uh, typed materials or handwritten materials? Well, what I use normally is uh, the standard uh, uh, OCR uh, recognition by the uh, PDF exchange viewer. I know uh, the newer the print, uh, uh, the better the quality, and the newer the print for a period of time, uh, the better quality. But uh, even then, the quality is only 95% at best. Um, the poorest quality I've ever seen with this uh, uh, piece of software is 40%, which is nothing. Uh, at the level of uh, 40, uh, 50 to 60%, I decide to, to retype the whole thing uh, manually or uh, whatever I do, or leave it uh, for good. But at the end of the day, all the PDFs, be it with OCR or not OCR, they have been uh, to be uh, re recognition that means uh, that uh, from the pdf the old ocr has taken away has to be taken away a new better to be added at the end day um in between i have uh, i know that there are some softwares available but uh, they are either so complex i cannot handle them or they're so expensive i cannot afford them so that would be a project at the end of the day uh, uh, on it, uh, on itself in between, uh, the solution is if somebody is looking for, for example, special quotation or special uh, information, I do the search myself uh, manually, uh, um, which takes about, about minimum half an hour, maximum about two days. And when I found out there's some material and the OCR is too bad, uh, I retype the paragraphs of the two or three pages at max uh, and presented them uh, and had to hand it over. Um, but the other point is uh, that you have to bear in mind, let's provide an example. Uh, we have a group of people who are preparing a narrative on the German Baha'i history. And one question was, uh, how many local spirit assembly were in place when the very first National Spirit Assembly of Germany was elected? I said, none. And they were really surprised that there must have been. I said, well, I can promise you there was no local spirit assembly because they were called not Geistiger Rat, as we say, but Arbeitsgemeinschaft. There was a completely different wording at that time, used by everybody, but you have to understand, they used it, Arbeitsgemeinschaft, rather than local spirit assembly. So if you are not aware of this, you can, would never ever find any local spirit assembly, even though there was an institution in the place. You know, um, also, uh, for example, you have to bear in mind uh, that other words, other understandings or other phrases have different of, uh, meaning at that time. Uh, you have to understand, the, for example, that uh, celebration of the Christmas and Easter uh, uh, celebrations were official Baha'i holidays still even in 1926, published in Zandedawahat. 
Yeah, so it's a different mentality. You have to really, uh, it's not only a, a matter of quality of the OCR, but you have to understand the think, the way of thinking, the way of living of these people, the way of acting and how they really talk to each other to, to find the result you're looking for. I mean, for example, Baha'u'llah uh, alone, you have Baha'u'llah, uh, Baha you have Baha'u'llah, you have Baha'u'llah, you have, uh, have uh, Baha'u'llah, uh, for example, even in the National Library today. Uh, this you can bridge by, for example, a standard way of writing, a standard way of spelling, uh, superior to what the original is, or by notes or whatever. But uh, phrases like Arbeitsgemeinschaft and Locus Fair Assembly, I cannot see any way uh, uh, near to do that. Yeah, fascinating. So there are two issues there. One is the uh, quality of OCR software, and mm -hmm. the other is the uh, the search terms and search strings and search strategies that are used. So there's two aspects to that. And I brought up the the matter of the software because it, it it's um, it, it's a challenge that all researchers and all institutions face. Mm -hmm. And I think that a network such as the one that we're part of uh, can uh, help each other in in identifying. Uh, new innovations in, in OCR software that will assist so many projects around the world. Each individual is struggling with, have, you, you mentioned the quality of performance of the best is 40% um, in some cases. Yeah, well, you're not the only one experiencing that. And so it's just one of those problems that we share uh, in using digital materials. So that's very interesting. But the second part you pointed out is the use of search terms. That may also uh, be the case when we're uh, doing a search in, in current online materials that someone has provided. We use a search term that is familiar to us, but it doesn't have the correct string for finding terms as they were used in previous decades and in different cultures. So this is a fascinating response to my question. Thank you. We've got time maybe for one or two more comments or questions uh, before we um, come to a close for today. Mushan, is your hand up again? Is that a, another question? Go ahead. Yes. Um, sorry, I was just going to pick up on something you just said, which was, uh, you know, the fact that we've got this group who, you know, are consulting at the moment about these issues. But I'm just wondering, going into the future, you, you've, we're, we're coming, as far as I can tell, unless you've got some, some surprise up your sleeve, to, towards the end of the series. And um, I'm wondering what the sort of ongoing uh, program is and is there some way of continuing to consult on a email list or something um, so that if we've got questions you can sort of put to the group and perhaps find someone who's got an answer that would be very useful. So I just want to thank Alexander for the presentation today and we hope that everybody enjoys watching it on YouTube and we look forward to seeing you at a future occasions. So thanks very much Alexander for today. I thank you, Graham, and the others. Thank you.